Good morning, gentlemen. We have an audition with Mr. John Pilkington. We're the six Chitterbug boys. Oh, yes. Room 23, third floor. Mr. Pilkington's on his way now. Yes. That's ten bands Mr. Pilkington's got to hear this morning. Yes, isn't it a pity he hates music? <laughs> and take this note to the outside broadcast department. During the Derby commentary on National, I noticed that the word can't was used on three occasions. Kindly note that the word is cannot. <laughs> I can't think where these fellows are educated. Any more mail? Yes, Mr. Pilkington. Here's a prepaid telegram from that Mr. Jack Hilton. No, what do you want this time? He still wants an audition, sir. But damn it, man, we've already told him he's got to wait his turn. There are 500 bands want auditions. Why should he have his before the others? Yes, sir. He says, as you can't give us an audition tomorrow, would you drop in and hear us at my Jack in the Box Roadhouse, which you pass on your way home? Infernal impudence. What shall I say in reply, sir? We're allowed nine words. I'll use only one. No. Mr. Pilkenden, what about giving me an audition with the microphone? How dare you let these people test me like this? What? What the deuce is this? They appear to be combinations, sir. Well, where do they come from? Good heavens! Washing on the BBC. Who's responsible for this sacrilege? I've got no idea, sir. Well, find out. Go up there and report to me. Yes, sir. Find out who's using the top floor and tell them to meet me in my office. Big wake up. Mrs. Bagwash will be here soon to do for us. Come on. Oh, half a minute. Let me finish my dream. Get up, you lazy little man. It's time to do our daily dozen. You do 24. I'm a bit tired. Oh, stinky, you are unkind interrupting my lovely nightmare. Never mind your nightmare. Now, oh, do listen. It's ever so interesting. Well, what is it? Well, I dreamed I went to Wembley, and there were no dogs, and there wasn't any hair. No hair? No. And instead of the hair, they had my sweetheart, Norcia. Oh, she looked ever so pretty. And she was being chased by a lion. Well, go on. What happened? Well, that's just it. You woke me up, and now I shall never know whether the lion escaped or whether Norcia ate him. Ate the lion? Well, you know what an appetite she's got. Ooh, lummy. It's gone half past ten, and we missed the changing of the guard again. Oh, and I did so want to see the soldiers. Well, I don't know about you, but I want some breakfast. I wonder if Henrietta's laid us an egg this morning. Oh, it does seem a shame robbing Henrietta of her poor little leg. It's no robbery. She's finished with it. I say, Stinker. Oh, who used this razor last? I did last night. Well, you've done a fine thing. You've left it in reverse and it's pushing your whiskers back in my face. Don't be a silly little man. Come up on the roof and have your morning run. You know what Miss Stack said? You'll have to wait till I change. How about I'll run round the roof? Oh, let me do it by myself. See how long I take. All right. On your marks. Set. Go. <laughs> Who is this Waterson, anyway? Hello, Lewis. Here. Yeah. I'll tell you what I want. Well, Lewis, aren't you looking homesick? <laughs> what have we got for breakfast? Morning, cock. Now then, Henrietta, what have you got for us this morning? Oh, look, big. Look what Henrietta's laid for your breakfast. What, all that for me? You naughty girl, you've been slacking again. Gerald, your missus is suffering from night starvation. Never mind, please. We'll put them together and scramble them. No, no. Fast, fair, fair. Big-hearted Arthur, that's me. We'll boil them as usual. Now, put them in the tin while I get the sundial to time the win. All right. <laughs> Ready? Hold on. Just a minute. Wait till the shadow gets on the line. Oh, blow. Now the sun's gone in. Never mind. We'll have to sing the chestnut tree. That's right. Four verses for hard and three for soft. Are you ready? Yes. Then go, please. Oh, underneath the spreading chestnut tree, 
big and stinker must agree. Look at me in a cock and bull story like that. It's unthinkable. Now tell me, where did you say this lad is? In uh, this room, sir. R27. R27? Is that a studio? No, sir. It's a rehearsal room, sir. Not often in use, sir. Do you know anything about this? No, sir. We, we don't use that. It's used for outside broadcast. Oh, no, pardon me. We've never been on that floor. It's used by in town tonight. It certainly is not. It's... I don't care whose office it is. I... What? Who's had the audacity to put this thing on my fire? The rope! Oh, look, Stinker, my little leg's got a puncture. Is it cracked? Not half, it's in the tubes coming out. Oh. What's the meaning of this? Oh, isn't this nice? Mr. Pilkinson himself, and just in time for breakfast. Oh, and you've brought my comms back. I thank you. What are you doing on this roof? Yes, that's right, Stinker. What are we doing on this gentleman's roof? Well, at the moment, sir, we're preparing breakfast. Well, are you responsible for that? Uh, oh, no, sir, that's not us. No, you've got the wrong one this time, sir. That's Mrs. Bagwash. Mrs. Bagwash, who's she? The, the woman, woman who comes, comes in to help us with the spring cleaning. Granted. Who are these people? Well, I haven't a card, but I'm big-hearted Arthur, and this is Stinker Murdoch. Yes. Uh, we came here for an audition, and they sent us up here and told us to stand by. Yes, and we've been standing by now for three months. Do you mean to say you've been living on this roof for three months? Well, we wanted to be on the spot, sir. <laughs> and what a spot we're on. This is the flat, sir. You'll have to excuse the room, Mr. Perkinson. We haven't made the bed or emptied the or anything. Heavens, a bedroom! No, a bed sits, sir. What's that? Oh, th that that's a drawing. Isn't it good? It's me, my dad. No, by stinker. He's ever so clever with his pencil. Oh! Going to all sorts. Take all this rubbish and clear out. Clear out? You mean leave our flat? At once. But we've only just bought a new bed ticket. Get out! But what about our audition? If you're not done in half an hour, I'll send for the police. Oh, isn't he piscatorial? Territorial. Albert Memorial. <laughs> isn't he a bully? Come on, big. We know when we're not wanted. We'd better start getting our small sounds. In future, this roof will be out of bounds to everybody. Well, this is the last straw. Look at my cousin. Look! Down, I'm not going to sit this time, sir. Coming on the left. Yeah, come on, big shift studying. I can't move. All right, we'll be out in a minute. I'll do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> ah, go away, you rude people. Well, then, Dick, we better get the small things out first. Okay, Dickie. Oh, oh, big? Yeah, what's the matter? Have you seen Aunt Jessie's chest? I beg your pardon. Oh, you silly little man. I mean the chest Aunt Jessie gave us to keep things in. Oh, that one. Oh, that's in here. You in our way? You're in mine, rather. I, I want to get up in that lift. Michael Standing. Dickie Murdoch. Haven't seen you since Cambridge. Oh, you're not the Standing who's always standing on the corner of the street, are you? Yes, I am. Introduce me, Dickie. I was at Cambridge, too. Really? That's very interesting. I'm the Trinity. Where were you? I was at Fairforbes. What are you talking about, Big? I was. I got my BSc. A Bachelor of Science? No. Biter of Sausage Covers. <laughs> I'd like to hear about that. What's your name? Uh, Arthur Askey. My new chum. Arthur Askey. What are you doing here? Broadcast? No, outcast. <laughs> outcast? Well, so long as you're not downcast. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, what do you do for a living? Oh, chief, the audition. We've been trying to get one here. So that's your ambition, is it? No, my ambition is to be a radio star and have a lovely house out in the country and always turn up half an hour late for rehearsals. <laughs> me too. Sounds very nice to me. A little place where you can take the air. Mr. Pilkington's given us that already. <laughs> oh, dear, I am sorry. But uh, tell me, Mr. Esky, are you married? No, I always look like this. You've got a girlfriend, I dare say. Oh, yes. Her name's Norcia. Oh, I understand. Does she want to settle down in the country, too? Oh, she doesn't mind where she settles, as long as she can go to the pictures. Well, you'll have to get a place in the country where there's a picture house. Eventually, we hope to open a show of our own somewhere. Yeah, that sounds a good idea. Why don't you come with us? Wherever we go, there's sure to be some corners you can stand oh, on. thanks very much, but I'm under contract here. Oh, bad luck. Why don't you try and get with a decent firm? Oh, Mike, while you're here, I suppose you wouldn't like to help us out with this lot. I'd love to, boys, but uh, I'm on the air in a few minutes. Carry on, London. Fire oh, oh, Wait a minute, here's Mr. Middleton. Ask him, he might help you. Oh, Tom. Do you? 
What's the trouble here? Doing a bit of transplanting or something? Oh, Mr. Muddleton, we are in the middle. We've got to get all this stuff in our little car out there. What ought we to do? Well, I can't see that you've anything to worry about. I should start by getting a pruning knife and... and trim all the edges off the whatnot. After all, it's a rank growth, something like my old Aspidextra conodliensis. And cut out this dead wood. It might make it a bit lower, but perhaps some people like it better that way. No, I'll tell you on second thoughts what I should do. I should wait till the autumn and collect a nice lot of dead leaves and garden rubbish and make a good bonfire of the lot. Goodbye. Hi, Rango. I told you there was plenty of room. Yes, but how are we going to try? Oh, don't be difficult, Dickie. It's simple enough. You sit on Aunt Jessie's drawers and stick your feet through the legs of the washstand. You left this junk in the foyer. Now, move along, please. Pass along, please. She'll never take it. Ignore it. Pretend it is now. Move along, please. It's quite all right, officer. We're just loading up the car. Yes, there's been a slight technical hitch. Well, hurry up. You're causing an obstruction. Here's a car waiting to pull in. Well, there's plenty of room for him to back in front of us. Yes, live and let live, Inspector. Never mind about that. Get it away. All right. Back in front of this car. Make room, please. Back in here. Hey, mind the paint. She won't stop. Watch it now. No wonder, no petrol. Well, where's the spare tin? Oh, it's under the luggage at the back. Well, we can't unpack now. We'll have to push it or get a tow or something. Oh, aren't you a fuss, Pop? What is all this? Why isn't my car opposite the door? We've got a slight obstruction, sir. Oh. So it's you again. Take this confounded contraption away. You take your confounded contraption away and we'll take ours. We're not your servants now, you know. Now, we're members of your public, so you better behave yourself, otherwise we'll stop paying you our ten bob a year. Oh, yes. I don't think you're everybody you because you've got a big car. We've got a nice car of our own. We want to buy yours, we could do. Well, we're not going to bother because we have just the money where they Well, then, I want to see your license and insurance. I thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous, isn't it? Can't be sue him for that. Well, here's a nice mess. All our stuff in the ditch. Never mind. We'll be able to find the petrol tin now. Here it is. Yeah. Ooh, and what do you think? What? It's empty. Jack! What's up, Freddy? He's coming. Who? Piggington. I saw his car coming over the hill. He'll be here in a minute. Pat! Hey, hey, what is it? A fire? Oh, Pilkington's coming. Tell the boys to stand by. We'll see if he stops or not. What's the matter? What's happened? Back tire's gone, sir. Confound it. How long is that going to hold us up? Well, at least ten minutes, sir. Well, well, don't tell me you've had a bunk, sir. We have had a bunk. What's it got to do with you? Oh, nothing. But I was just wondering if you'd care to come inside and have a cup of tea whilst it's being fixed. Huh? Oh, thanks. Better than sitting here. Let me know when it's finished. Just better, good, sir. Annoying thing, those punctures aren't the same. Huh? Exactly. That's what I always say.
an idle daydream I take a simple theme And out of it make a melody If you feel unhappy or tearful If you need a song that is cheerful Listen to the melody maker man Hear him say Sweet music will drive your cares away And in a while Hear me play, and when I depart, I hope maybe to leave in your heart a memory of the melody. Maybe you think rhythm is the thing for you. If so, let's go. Here's a little swing for you. And that's what I said, said me. I went up to a pirate chief and politely raised my lid. She did. And got myself apprentice to the famous Captain Kidd. Yo-ho, yo-ho, some kid was Captain Kidd. On the good ship called Sea Jane. We put the sea from Dover. Then the rum went round again. And we were half seas over. It's hard to be a pirate and sail the rolling bay. Have to scrub our neck on the good ship Dorothy Like it, sir? Like what? The number we just played. Oh, yes, you've been playing, haven't you? Quite good. Well, the wheel is on, sir. There was a nail in the tire. A nail? Oh, that's funny. I only put down broken bottles. What? That's just what I was going to tell you, sir. The road's covered with glass. Glass? Oh, yeah. Let me explain. Back, is there, all over the road. So you deliberately put glass on the road so that I should get a puncture. But we only wanted you to hear the band, sir. We didn't mean any harm, Mr. Piggington. Jack in the box. Then you must be Jack Hilton. That's right. I might have known it. Oh. Don't 
don't think you can get away with this outrage. I'd have you prosecuted. The luck of you. Push another step. Well, you don't have to. He has a petrol pump. Oh, yes. Sound the hooter. Seven. Seven. Let's have seven. Good evening. We want some petrol. How much, sir? All about a pint. I'm sorry, sir. Can't let you have a pint. All right. Half a pint will do. Don't take any notice of my friend. Put a gallon in, will you? Oh, Dickie. Oh, isn't it lovely? A pigsty. Do you like the country, sir? Oh, yes, I think it must be the yeoman in me. Yeoman? Yes, my father was a yeoman. He used to go to bed with his spurs on. Mother used to get so cut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one and five, sir. He's got no sense of humour. Yeah. Here you are, my good man. Ooh, I suppose there aren't any cottages to let round here. Cottages? Yes, you know, with old oak beams you can bump your head on and everything you want. Outside. Oh, Mr. Hobday is the man you want to see, sir. In the estate agents next door. He's got cottages in all kinds of places. Hey, come on, Dickie. Let's step in and buy one. What now? Yes, I feel a deal coming on. We've got all our furniture and things. We can move in at once and save ourselves a night's lodging. Are you Mr. Hobday? Yes. Yeah. Well, we'd like to be fitted for the house. A house? Yes. Oh, my dear sir, I've been in a house. I've been in a seating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, house now, um, uh, what kind of a house would you like? Oh, the usual sort of house, four walls and a grievance. Yeah, I, I, I think I have the very thing for you. The Laurels, gentleman's country cottage, two reset, four bathrooms, 16 bedrooms, and an Italian lodger. Oh, we couldn't live with him in the house. Who? The Italian lodger. Lancia. Now, how are you asking for this, uh, this tiny cottage? Oh, my dear sir, it's a bargain. Only 12 guineas. What, a year? <laughs> a week. Uh, have you anything cheaper? Without beams. How much do you want to pay? We don't want to pay anything, but we've got three pounds. Three pounds? Just wait a minute. Aye, aye, aye. Here, this ain't right, four and sixpence. Yes, it is. Oh, no, it ain't. When I took this here job on as caretaker, you promised me five shillings a week. <laughs> I've told you every week you borrowed ten shillings from us last derby day, and we're stopping sixpence a week from your salary until it's paid. Hmm. That's different, isn't it? Well, how much do I owe now, then? Six shillings. Mm. Ooh, I tell you what, you give me two weeks' pay in advance and I'll settle the whole thing up instead of fiddling about like this. Eh? Oh. Where's the Droom Castle pile? She is, sir. Uh, why? I think I can let it. <laughs> what, let Droom Castle? You can't do that. That place is haunted. Uh, people never stay there. It's full of ghosts. Who are you? I'm the caretaker there. Well, the ghosts don't seem to have done you much harm. Ah, and they go there in the daytime. I wouldn't sleep there at night. You know, sir, I've seen some horrible things. People without heads. People with swords stuck through them. And the smell of sulfur. Oh, oh. Ah, nonsense. You've had your money, no go. Yes, all right. Yeah, but I've warned you, if you let people move in there, then ghosts are going to cause trouble. Yeah. Heck of a lot of trouble, too. Yeah. It's old world, all right. Um, now, here we are, sir. I think this is exactly what you want. Oak, beams and everything. Uh, well, of course, it's a little larger than what you required, uh, but we'll take that into consideration in the rent. Oh, isn't he a nice man, Becky? What sort of a place is it? Well, as a matter of fact, the owner's in America and just wants to have people in, you know, to keep the place aired. So, shall we just say a nominal sum? You give me your three pounds and you can stay there till make us. Quickly, give him the money before he changes his mind. Does this mean we can move in at once? Certainly. Three. I'll give you written authority. Mr. Askey, Arthur Askey, received from Mr. Arthur Askey sum of three pounds for rent to September 25th for Drone Castle. Castle? That's what it's called. Thank you. Here's the key. Uh, of course, you know it's quite an old place. Um, some of the boards may creak a bit at night or one or two little things like that. But remember, 
That's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, Dickie, I'm so excited. We've got a castle. Come on, let's go and run a flag up to show that we're in residence. Oh, I'm the king of the castle. Sit down, you dirty castle. Oh, I'm the king of the castle. You think this is the place, Dickie? Yes, isn't it? All right, bye. Looks as if the moths have been at it, doesn't it? Well, what do you expect the three queens from the Ah, oh, well, I've heard about strange happenings in castles like this. Oh, don't be so childish. Get the key and let's go inside. Come on, Lewis. Oh, oh what was that? Only a bat? Well, who threw it? There's many all sorts of strange things happen in the country. Remember what the gentleman said? There's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Well, here's the key. Open the door. No, you open it. It's your castle. No, you better do it. I can't reach the keyhole. Don't worry, I'll hold you up. Oh, will you? Oh. Well, if anything goes wrong, you let me down, won't you? I don't want to be left up there hanging on to the key. <laughs> open it. Don't worry. Remember, there's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Oh, what's the matter? It's cozy in here. Don't say you unless you've got something to say you about. Oh! Uh, now who's away? It's all right. Just gave me a shot. Only a suit of armor covered in a dust sheet. What did you shut that door for? I didn't shut it. Well, we'll have it open anyway. We must have some air. Nervous. There's, there's a, a perfectly, perfectly natural, natural explanation. explanation. What were you running for? I thought you were in a hurry. Yeah. Oh, look, Dickie, there's an organ. Yes, well, leave it alone. Oh, let me play a bit of organ. Go on, you pump it up. Now. Yes, go on, pump it up. Yeah. I'll play something. I know. I'll sing you my signature. I am ready. Yes. Big-hearted Arthur, they call me. Big-hearted Arthur, that's me. That's me! What was that? Must be the echo. Oh, yeah. I'll start again. Big-hearted Arthur, they call me. Big-hearted Arthur, that's me. That's me! Right. Clean if I'm not very clever. Clever! But only because I've got to be. I've got tall ambitions for such a short man. The echo was there when this chorus began. But can you hear it now? I blowed if I can. Big hearted Arthur, they call me. Big hearted Arthur, that's me. Ha <laughs> ha! Some people in our position would feel scared. Yeah, I suppose they would. Look, Big, it's a bedroom. So it is. Ah, some candles. Oh, light them. It'll be a bit more cheerful, won't it? I'll explore. <laughs> Cobwebs. Why say, Dickie? What's this? That? That's where we're going to sleep. Well, I'm not going in the top bunk. Oh, don't be silly. We're both sleeping here. What, you and I in the one bed? Of course. Well, this is my side. Oh, lovely spring. Aren't you going to undress? No, 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 no fear. The, the sheets may be damp. Dickie. What is it? Oh, there's a man's hand under my pillow. Are you sure? Oh, I'm positive. It's your hand. Oh, so it is. 
Oh, knock it, Dickie. Don't blow the lights out yet. I didn't do it. You didn't? Give me the matches, Dickie. Oh, I don't like this place. I'm frightened. Nothing a bit frightened, though. Remember, there's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Yes, perhaps the main fuse went. Candles don't have fuses. Well, the main with them. You go on horn somewhere else. We want to get to sleep. Wait a minute. Was it you playing tricks with those lights and doors? Yea, verily, it was even I. There you are, Big. I told you there was a perfectly natural explanation for everything. But he says he's a spirit. Spirit, don't be ridiculous. There's no such thing. No such thing? What then am I? I'll tell you what you are. You're a blinking old nuisance. Here, you can't talk like that to me. I can... I tell you, I'm a ghost. Then tuck your head underneath your arm and push off. Whose ghost are you, anyway? I'm the ghost of Jasper Blackfang, the miser of Doom. Oh, Dickie's the miser. Oh, I've always wanted to meet one of those. For 500 years, I've haunted this spot. What? His eye's awful. Oh. Pick on! Uh, pick on from this place, ere I blast you to eternity. I'll wreck you with pain. I'll turn your blood to ice. I'll grind your bones to powder. Be gone! Yeah. Be gone! Oh, help Be gone! Oh, help. Oh, help. Oh, help. Oh, help. 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 What a place, Dickie. We'd have stayed there another five minutes. I wouldn't have half had the wind up. Yes, we're well out of it. Though, as a matter of fact... Don't tell me. There's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Where are we going to do now? I don't know, but we can always ask when we get there. Hey, Jack. There's a car coming down the road. There might be customers. Right. Quick, boys. Up on the stand. Charles, fix the stable. Thank heavens, Dickie. Here's some light. Yeah. Seems a bit posh. I hope they don't throw you out. I'd even enjoy that after what we've been through. Please, gentlemen, can I get you a table? No, show us where it is. We'll go to it. Up this way, please. You'll get a good view of the cabaret from here, sir. Oh, goody, goody. Now, sir, dinner is ten and six. Uh, uh, would you like it a la carte? A la carte. That's an idea. Oh, of course. On the back, sir. Uh, here it is, sir. Oh, I see. Now, Truitt, Fume, 4 and 6, Jambon, Fume, 6 and 6, Saumon, Fume, 8 and 6. That's rather expensive. What is it? That's French for smoked salmon, sir. Oh, I suppose you haven't any bloater, Fume. Oh, certainly, sir. Or on Fume, 4 and 6 the pair. Oh, you shouldn't eat as many as all that. This is more like it being vegetable soup, 6 pence. Yes, how much is the bread? A bread is free, sir. We'll have two plates of soup and a fortly loaf. I beg your pardon, sir. You heard the order, my man. Two plates of soup and step in it. Yeah, step on it. Yeah, get the soup. Beach, beach, beach. Oh, very well, sir. And no onions in here, he's caught him. Shut up, big, and listen to the band. Be 
this creature. Give me oh, my arm. Oh, I've been done. Oh, I, 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 what do you think you're doing? Jackinson. Arthur Askey. Go on, play some more. We haven't had nearly enough yet. No, and you, you wouldn't have had that if I'd known who we were playing to. All right, boys. Sorry, this little man gets so carried away. Oh, you don't have to apologize. This is Jack Hilton. We're old pals. We were Pierrots together at Walton on the Natty. Oh, oh happy, happy days. days. What are you doing here? Well, we were passing and Oh, this is my playmate, Stinker. How do you do? Stinker? Why do they call you that? Or shouldn't I ask? Oh, yes, do rather ask me anything you like. It's a rather long story. You see, my uncle... Oh, don't start him on that. Well, I'll tell you some other time. My real name's Dickie Murdoch. Oh, and to complete the ceremony, I'm Pat Kirkwood. And I'm Freddie. How do you do? Lovely place you've got here. Oh, the place is all right, but we don't get any customers. What a shame. Do they know the bread's free? No one would come this way in the dark. Well, I can't understand that. You've got some lovely dark round here. No, the castle up the road is the trouble. Yes, it's haunted. You're telling us. It's our castle. What? what? You mean you've leased it? I don't know whether we've leased it or lost it, but it's ours. You haven't seen the ghost, have you? Seen him. He nearly cleft us to the brisket. Were well, you frightened? Oh, we weren't exactly frightened. No, we were scared stiff. <laughs> oh, I just remembered. We've left our bag there. My king comes are in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's no laughing matter. How am I going to cast a clout when May's out? Go on, tell us what happened. Well, we got to the castle and we went to bed and we just put the lights out when suddenly we are... <laughs> what was that? Sounds like someone at the door. Who? Oh, my goodness. What is it? There's nobody there. Don't, Don't worry. worry. There's, There's a, a perfectly, perfectly natural, natural explanation for everything. everything. Uh, what can it be? It must be the postman. He always knocks twice. <laughs> Lewis! Oh, Dickie, we forgot all about him. Poor old Lewis. Oh, Lewis, meet everybody. Everybody, this is Lewis. What's this? That? Go ahead, Lewis. That's the ham frill at the ghost wall. This wasn't on any ghost. I tell you, it was. Well, if he was a ghost, he got his frill from Moss Brothers. You're right. Moss Bros. What does that mean? It means that someone's been pulling your leg. Go on, he said he was 500 years old. He wouldn't pull a leg at that age. Ah, oh, it's probably some chap living there rent-free and he scared you away. If I thought that, I wouldn't half go red. If it were me, I'd go back and knock the stuffing out of him. You will? Right, we'll come with you. Hey, 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 wait a minute. What about the roadhouse? Oh, Freddie can look after that. And I'll come to anything to break this monotony. Aye, it is a bit humdrum, isn't it? Proper humdrum. Sure. Yes, it's me. I brought the coffee. Oh, where's here? I don't mind. This plan was obtained tonight by S-24 from the Air Ministry. It's a blueprint of the newest long-range bomber. Take all photographs you want of this now, and let me know when you've finished. What is it? The old man. He's brought coffee. Wait. All right, Carl, they've got that. We are coming over to you now. So far, it is all right. But what of the sabotaging of the ammunition works? That also we have arranged. Carl is working now on the time bomb. It is good. Now listen carefully. Yes, Excellency. We expect you tonight to be asleep for further instructions. Bring nothing incriminating with you. That's all. Nestoli. Nestoli. Where well, is the old man in now? Wait. Is my bag on the plane? Yeah, everything's fixed. Is that ready? Yes, all it needs now is winding up and the alarm setting. Good, then put it away. All right, Matteo. You can come in. Evening, gentlemen. I hope the coffee's all right. I'll keep this up as I can. Pour it out and don't talk so much. You are late. Sorry, sir, but I've had a bit of an acting tonight. Mm, what are you talking about? I've had a couple of visitors. Visitors? Yes. All right, don't worry. I handled the situation all right. Hey, I put on that uniform you gave me and did a bit of haunting. <laughs> that scared them. <laughs> I wasn't half hairy. I frightened myself a bit. Mm, any danger of them returning? <laughs> They've gone all right, and they won't come back in a hurry. <laughs> Don't make a noise, and we'll play old Jasper the Grasper at his own game. What do you mean? Well, he haunted us, didn't he? We'll snoop round till we find him, then we'll haunt him back again. But whatever you do, keep quiet. I thought you said we to keep quiet. So I did, but I hadn't started yet. 
Now I'm ready. Come on. Uh, I don't want to hurry you, gentlemen, but it's long past my bedtime. Oh, be quiet. When I let you come here to broadcast your baked beans, you didn't tell me you were going to keep me up all night. Oh, shut up. It's all very well for you to say shut up. Here, how am I going to get out? Last three lines gone. I ain't got my tricycle with me. All right, uh, you can come in the car with us and we'll drop you in town. Here, you'll be careful how you drive, won't you? I well, know what you young fellas are in this here car. Okay. This way, sir. Mind your head. Ooh. Hey, what about the lights? We can twist them off at the bottom. Oh, it's a dentist. Where do we spit? Do you notice something fishy about this place? No, I can't smell anything. This is the first room we've seen with electric light. <laughs> They've got a young power station here. Oh, it's a soda fountain. Now, what flavour would you like? Chocolate, raspberry or vanilla? Raspberry? Right, you shall have it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Dickie, I've got sunstroke. You haven't hurt yourself, have you? No, but I can see a lot of lights. So can I, you silly little man. You just switched them on. Why? Look, here's a microphone. And this is a camera. I know what it is. It's a television studio. And there's a screen. Oh, what a bargain, and all for three quid. Arthur, this is the biggest break we've ever had. We don't need the BBC now. What? That's right. We can broadcast without... We can start in opposition. What a swell idea. We can get the band and the girls and put in a terrific show and we'll... Oh. What's the matter? Does anybody know how to work this thing? No. Wait a minute, I think Freddie does. He used to work in a radio shop. Grand, then we'll have our own station and call it the ABC. What? The Askitop Broadcasting Corporation. Well, Come on, let's get Freddie. Right? I know, he's ready. Well, we are very pleased with your work, Shaffer. Thank you, Excellency. Oh, look, what a lot of lovely kachkits. Gadgets. I said kachkits. Well, can you make them work? I think perhaps, yes. Where is the screen? The screen? You're not going to televise us in the rude, are you? Oh, he means the screen we see you on. It's over there. Oh, look, isn't it nice? Now, let's see. This little piggy went to market, yeah. and this little piggy stayed home. Oh, isn't it exciting, those people? Somebody in trap number one. Oh, yes, oh, 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 it's just for the black tooth. No, I ain't. I've never seen any of you before. Here, take your hands off me. Take your hands off me. Who is he? He's the old devil who gave us the willies last night. You realize you're trespassing here? Oh, no, I ain't. You are. Oh, I'm caretaker here. I look after this place for the owners. Well, eh? we're the owners now, and I'm not quite sure that we need a caretaker. Staircase. A out. ghost chaser. Man, Man to look, look after the place. place. You're, you're set. What? And another thing. What's all this ghost nonsense? You frighten the life out of us. You wait till we tell the estate agent about you. Oh, dear. Oh, you wouldn't do that? Yes, we would. Well, the haunting wasn't my idea. I didn't mean no harm. You see, some gentlemen have got this place for commercial broadcasting, and they don't want no strangers about, see? Hey, that accounts for the television studio. That's right. They're showing their baked beans to the world. Oh, are they? Well, we've got more than baked beans to show the world. Have these broadcasters rented the place? Well, you know, I let it to him on the side. Mm. Oh, you did, did you? Oh. That's another thing the estate agents would like to know. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. But we're not going to say anything because from now on you're working for us, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. But you won't tell Mr. Obday, will you? Not if you behave like a good boy. No. Oh, uh, Jack, we've finished with her. We're having a break now. Where can we get some coffee? Oh, yes, Jack. We are thirsty. Ask Old Faithful. He's a local lad. He'll show you. Yes, come on, girls. Come on, that way. That's it. Turn the left there. That's right. Go on. I'm going to like working for you. Wait for me. Wait for me. Huh? Oh, I think I got it walking. Will somebody stand in front of the camera? I will. No, no, oh, let me. No, spoil, spoil. Well, I've never seen me on the screen. Now, how would you like me to stand? This is my best side. Although this is nearly as bad. Don't make about stand still. Put this mic in front of the camera. Talk or sing or something. One talk, one sing, coming up. Hey, then, y'all. Oh, what a glorious thing to be. A healthy, grown-up, busy, busy bee. The Board of Agriculture has been very busy of late. Pinching all the pollen from the cold deep flowers. I'd like to be a busy, busy bee. Haven't you got me yet, Freddy? Shut up and keep singing. I think I've got it. Being just as busy as the bee can be. Flying round the garden, the sweetest ever seen. Taking back the honey to the dear old queen. Da hätte man uns erst nicht 15 Jahre vorher ausplündern sollen. 
Ihnen gar nichts nützen, denn Sie können ja kaufen. If you like, but don't sting me. I like to be a busy, busy bee, being just as busy as a bee can be, flying all around the wild hedge rows, stinging all the cows upon the parson's nose. Hello, John, 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 who is that? I don't know, Excellency. I'd like, oh, Dickie, how much longer have I got to stand in this heat? My comms are all racking up, they're all round my waist. It's walking. Eh? Hey? What? So it is. Look, we're all on that screen. Oh, Dickie, and you didn't tell me. My hair's all untidy. Here, watch me while I make a funny face. Oh, you do look, Andy. I think it's an improvement. Look. Himmel, don't have it, Your station is discovered. You must get back at once. Destroy all evidence. Leave nothing. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I think I've got another bite. What? No. Look. This is the BBC television station at Alexander Palace. Good morning, everybody. Morning? Where's she coming from? Can't exalt the palace. That means we're on the same wavelength. This morning, instead of our usual demonstration film, Mr. John Pilkington is going to tell you something about our television plans for the future. Pilkington? Oh, Dickie, it's the old battle axe himself. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, in response to many earnest requests, I'm appearing in person before you this morning. Earnest request? Who'd ask him, anyway? Now, many of us are asking, what is the future of television? And I bet you don't know the answer. Is he on our way, Blake? Yes. Well, oh, go on, put me through. I'll tell him a few things. Go on, Jack, look after the lights. Dickie, get the camera. Okay. As you know, I'm always on the lookout for fresh talent. Don't you believe it. You can't get near the old gentleman. In fact, all of us up here are anxious to find new faces. Ha! And blimey, you could do with it. Did you ever see such a clock in your life? We'd like to give you morning programs, but at the moment that is not possible. Very shortly, we hope to conduct a ballot. Yes, vote for Pilkington for putrid programs. Boo! Oh, good heavens, where's that coming from? It's not from this studio, it must be an outside station. I have, however, some very good news for you all. Don't tell us you're going to resign. This is dreadful. Fade them out. You can't, it's a pilot wavelength. Then, then fade out, Mr. Pilkington. Now I have a most interesting announcement to make. I, I'm sorry, sir. We, we've had to fade you out. You, you've done what? I'm terribly sorry, sir. We, we've got interference. And, interference, uh, sir? Do I understand that I've been faded out? Now, perhaps if you come with me, sir, you'll understand what's happened. Oh. Well, playmates, I've done you one good turn. I've got rid of him. And now I can tell you what really does happen. He says he spends his time searching around for fresh talent. Shall I tell you what happens when he finds it? He keeps it hanging about for three months and then gives it the sack. Scoundrel, I'll... Fade him off instantly. I, I, I am sorry, sir. I, I can't. It's, it's a pirate station. Pirate station? Why the... Him and his experts. Why, I could do better than him with my hands tied behind my back. And what's more, I will. You tune in on this wavelength at 8 o'clock tonight and I'll show you. I'll show you some of the talent that he's missed. Jack Hilton and his band. Pat Kirkwood. Arthur Askey. Richard Murdoch. Huh. I'll have this man in jail. Get the police. Get Scotland Yard. Get everything. I want that station traced. Yes, sir. Yes, it's all jolly well saying it'll be all right on the night, but it is the night. We're on in half an hour. Well, let's tell a few old jokes and call it Chestnut Corner. What else? Yeah. Here, we might try that waiter joke. Oh, yes. Waiter, have you a wild duck? No, but I've got a tame one I could aggravate for you. <laughs> oh, sir. Oh, well, we have to go. Oh, oh, you can't get on here. Oh, Dickie, I've just thought of another one. What is it? Would you like to see a photograph of me taken when I was in hospital? Oh, there. There you are. I'm in the end bed. Yes, but the end bed's empty. Is it? I must have got out for a minute. Now, that's a face. Come on, Stinky. Your glue fingers are here. Oh. Stinky. Right there. There they are. Good evening, girls. Sorry to keep you waiting. Good evening, Mr. Murdoch. Brought your music with you. Yes, Mr. Murdoch. Good. Now, I want to put a straight quartet into the show tonight. What is this? The balloon barrage? What are you doing here? Well, I'm not doing much at the moment, old boy, but I shall be when we start to sing. Sing? You're not singing in this? Oh, go on, let me sing. Good evening, girls. <laughs> Am I popular? But you don't know this work. Oh, just show me the hard bits. I'll get on all right. All right, there's the copy. So. Now, you see here, you start and dance. And uncle. What do you mean, and uncle? Do you have auntie? You must have uncle. I didn't say anything about auntie or uncle. I said and auntie, meaning slow. Oh, I didn't know. Hmm. And in this bit, you see, you sing Bush Fairman. Who? Not who, Bouche Ferme. Never heard of him. Bouche Ferme means mouth shut. Oh, I see what you mean. And do the girls keep their mouth shut too? In that part, yes. That'll take a bit of doing, won't it? That's very rude. Well, if that's quite clear, we'll make a start. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
I'd better have a cut of this uh, plume de Martin business. Bouche ferme. A bouche ferme. All right, Andre. <coughs> you have to keep your lips closed. Do you know this quartet from the auditorio, Old King Cole? Oh, this is easy. Easy for you. You've got very little to do in it. Now, are we ready? Here, don't you think we'd better give the girls a bit of a start? What do you mean, give them a start? Well, let them sort of start, and we'll catch them up as we go along. Certainly not. We, we all start together. together. Here, have either of you two ever said anything by yourselves? No. No? Are we ready? Just then, go, peace. <laughs> to me, sir. What's that? FP-42. That's one of the plans missing from the Air Ministry. Have you found anything? I think we've found more than we were looking for. There he is. That's the scoundrel. Hello? Who? Hobday? What? Pirate station? Uh, this man, Asky, you're looking for. Uh, is there a reward? Uh, good. Uh, well, I can tell you where he is. He is at Droom Castle. That's all we want to know. Thanks. He's at Droom Castle in Sussex. Ah. Nine o'clock. Here you are. See? Get ready with anything on. Good luck. 
Good luck. Good luck. Fifty-nine and a half. Fifty-nine and three quarters. Fifty-nine and seven-eighths. Go. Hello, everybody. This is the Eskitoff Broadcasting Company. This morning we promised it, and tonight you're going to get it. A brand new scintillating epoch-making show. Ladies and gentlemen, Bandwagon. or my ratting suit. Evening dress or your ratting suit? Mm. Well, you can't go wrong in evening dress. Right, I'll wear my ratting suit. By the way, who are you going to take to the dance? Well, I think I shall take Violet. Violet? Mm. Violet who? Violet Ray. Violet Ray. Oh, I know her brother. Hip hip. Oh, Ray. Who are you going to take? I'm going to take Norcia. Yes, yeah. but she can't dance, can she? No, she can't dance, but all can that baby sit out. <laughs> oh, da 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 One port and lemon and she's mine. <laughs> You know, Big, honestly, you don't look the sort of little man who takes girls out to dances. <laughs> what was I laughing at? Do you remember? I don't know. I can't think. I'll go and ask my mother. Mother! And now that we've got rid of him, Pat Kirkwood and I will give you our version of The Only One Who's Difficult Is You. OK, Jack? <laughs> You're so lovely, but I seem so hard to get. Honey, you've refused me since the very day we met. Honey, have some pity, for you know I love you so. Tell me one thing, just the one thing that I'm wanting to know. You'd fix things right away uh -huh. if you could have your the only one who's difficult is you. The preacher's quite okay. The organist would play. The only one who's difficult is you. The weather report for Sunday says bright sunshine. A suitable day for you to say. You'll be mine. Oh, the choir is ready to sing. And the bells are willing to ring. The only one who's difficult is you. You'd fix things right away if you could have your way. The only one who's difficult is you. The preacher's quite okay, and I'll be there to play. The only one who's difficult is you. <laughs> the weather report for Sunday says bright sunshine. A suitable day for you to say you'll be mine. Look why we.
sounds like him. Yes, we'll soon know what it's all about. He's in a hurry, all right. We got your message. What has happened? Our station has been found. We must be quick. Back to Dune Castle and hurry. And now, customers, we can't avoid it any longer. Here is big-hearted Arthur in person. <laughs> man, what are you going to sing? Well, I don't know, Governor. What would you like me to sing? Something short? Yeah, go on, hop it. Don't be so rude. I'll announce it myself. Well, playmates, I'm going to sing you one of my balmy little songs now, and as this is a bit on the bright side, I think you'd better get Grandma to bed. Go on, Grandma, hop it. Have an early night. There she goes. Dear old Grandma. <laughs> Good old faggot. So here it is, playmates. A pretty little bird am I. I I go. My heart is like a singing bird, what wings its way from pole to pole. My heart is like a singing bird, my liver's like a dry pet, so ha ha, hee hee. Oh, little brown jack, don't I love thee? I sing, 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 I fly, 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 a pretty little bird am I, yi, yi, a pretty little bird am I. My father's like a singing bird, a corn grey or a raven black. He's always singing at his work, and sixteen times he's had the sack. Ha ha, hee hee. Oh, little brown ale, don't he love thee? I sing, sing, sing. I fly, fly, fly. Hello, Louis here. Come and see your uncle laughing at our pretty little queen. is like a singing bird, although I'm poor and badly fed. And when my voice is worn away, I'll beg my door from bread to bread. Ha ha, hee hee. Oh, little brown workhouse, I love thee. I sing, sing, sing. I fly, fly, fly. A pretty little bird. Am I, 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 I? I'm going to fly away. Bye, bye. Oh, 
asking you to stay here with the car and keep the engine running. Somebody's thought of an original end. Oh, I have an urgent communication, sir, from Sir Angus MacBeef. Chief? Yes, sir. Congratulations on magnificent publicity campaign. Bandwagon must be regular feature. Signed, Angus MacBeef. Which is we're in. Great. That's another one of his shirts. Help. Help. Quickly. Before we are blown to bits. There's a goat here with a time bomb on him. Look. There he is down by the camera. Whoa. 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 Stop, stop, everybody, stop! Stop, Come on, Lewis. Come on, Come on. There's a good boy. Come on, Rosebud. Don't be frightened. Come on, Lewis. There you go, Lewis. Go on, 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 And that, Playmates, is how Bandwagon came to the BBC. And I go.